In this lesson, we will be exploring the exciting work by Heather Galler. Heather Galler does all sorts of different types of artwork from landscapes to animals to pet portraits. And she even makes beautiful flower bouquets. When you look at her work, you can see that her work is non-realistic. She's taking real things like flowers and animals but making them non-realistic and using interesting colors and designs. The elements of our Heather Galler focuses on our line, shape, and color. We can also see lots of exciting patterns. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on Heather Galler's beautiful flower bouquets. This lesson will be broken down into three parts. Let's start part one. For part one of this project, you are going to need a messy mat, a white piece of paper, and Sharpies. What we're going to be doing is taking the designs that we saw in Heather Galler's work in her flower bouquets and creating some amazing flower bouquets of our own. I'm using different lines and shapes for this part. We know that these are flowers, but they don't look like real flowers. That's okay. That's what makes this a fun and interesting project. I'm starting by creating my flowers and my leaves at the top of my piece of paper. I'm only going to go halfway down my piece of paper because I need to fit my vase as well as the foreground, what my vase and flowers are sitting on. I'm taking my time and really filling in all of that empty space with my flowers and my leaves. Now I'm ready to move on to my vase. You can add an interesting design. You could make your vase round, square, anything you think. I'm adding some extra little details onto my foreground. That's what my bouquet is sitting on. And I'm also going to add some details onto my background, like these fantastic polka dots. All right, for part two, we're going to be adding some shape and line designs using crayon. We're going to be making some awesome designs using line and shape to fill in all of the details that are on our Heather Galler inspired flowers. On every single empty space, I am using one color and one type of design. See how I did lines? on that outer edge of that flower, and then blue lines on the inner edge of that flower. I'm filling in parts and pieces. I'm filling in these little gaps. It's almost like a stained glass window with one color and design. I'm adding hearts to the background. You can use all sorts of different shapes and lines to fill in all of your space. This is the really fun part. I'm choosing colors that inspire me and remind me a lot of Heather Galler's work. She uses a lot of bright, almost pastel or lime neon colors. So I am using the colors that I saw in her work to inspire my flowers. Remember, your flowers don't have to look realistic, right? The colors don't have to be realistic either. So you can have a flower that has four different colors on it. You can make each petal a different color if you like. This is what starts to bring your art piece to life. Take your time. As you can tell in this video, it's fast forwarded. I am not actually working this quickly. This step is going to take you quite a bit of time because we have to fill in every single space. No spaces should be left undone. So as you can see, my vase and my foreground, that's what the vase with flowers is sitting on. I haven't added any details to those yet. This is going to take me quite some time. Think about what color combinations look really nice together, right? So certain colors might not look great together. Other colors might look fantastic and complement each other. I'm making sure that I'm coloring inside the spaces. I'm not scribbling. I'm not rushing. This is a really, really fun part, adding in all of these fantastic details.
Heather Galler flowers are filled in with beautiful designs using our crayons, we're going to create something called a crayon resist by using watercolors on top of our designs. All right, we are moving on to the third and final step of this Heather Galler project, and that is going to be creating a crayon resist. That means you're going to be using watercolors on top of all of your spaces. I'm starting with green. What creates a crayon resist is because crayons are made out of wax and they resist the water. So the spaces that might not have crayon the watercolor will stick to, but the spaces that do have crayons, the watercolor kind of just skates right on top. So I'm turning my piece as I'm working to make it easier for me, and I'm filling in all of my different spaces. I'm making sure to take my time. Now my watercolor set looks a little bit fancy. You might have a more simple version of a watercolor set, and that will do just fine. This step of the project is going to take quite a bit of time. It's really, really challenging to try to stay inside those lines super well, so it takes a lot of focus to be able to do that. I know we'll do a fantastic job. When you're using watercolors, you need to make sure to wake them up. So as you can see, I'm putting my paintbrush in water, and then I'm adding it to the paint to make the watercolors work to become watercolors. You can actually see when my paintbrush starts to dry out, I just dip it in the water and then go back to that same color to let that color keep coming out of my paintbrush. When I'm changing my colors, I want to make sure to completely get that pink color off of my paintbrush. You can do that by dipping your paintbrush in water, or you can even use a paper towel or a napkin to wipe off your paintbrush after you've dipped it in water. This is really going to make your Heather Galler art piece come to life. Our goal is to have no white spaces by the end of this step. That means no white spaces at all. We are going to make sure we have every single spot covered with color.